another superb weekend with the BRCC Mazda Super Cup. We're here this weekend in Castle Coombe, but just to take you guys back through what happened last time at Rockingham, we had Jack Harden grace the top step of the podiums, not just once, but twice that weekend. Finally a breakthrough for him, but yet he's down in 10th this weekend, Lloyd. Absolutely. It's a race for anyone. Steve Roberts, on pole position, mm -hmm. he's normally sixth in the championship, as you say, Jack right yep. the way back in 10th and we would expect him to be up the front of the field so a lot can happen thanks guys well this is going to be a really interesting and really significant race in the story of the 2018 campaign here's how they line up steve roberts on pole position how nervous will he be ahead of this one james blake baldwin alongside then it's luke herbert and christian white with a great qualifying effort as well carl garner and aiden hills make up row three ahead of simon baldwin and sam tatler then johnny greensmith and jack harding two who will be definitely ones to watch moving forwards then it's Gary Townsend and Tom Parker and the rest all the way down to Mark Swarbrick and Duncan Harris at the back of the field well arriving here this weekend Luke Herbert and Jack Harding are tied on points for the championship lead however they are separated on the grid by seven spots Luke Herbert is third Jack Harding is tenth this will be a cracking race the red lights go on they go out now away we go here at Castle Coombe the uh, cars rush up towards the first corner and Steve Roberts from pole position hangs on to the race lead. Luke Herbert on the grass there, though, on the inside line. James Blake Baldwin was giving him absolutely no room at all. And so immediately, Luke Herbert in trouble. He starts to slip down the order on board with former MR2 ace Christian White, who's finally got to terms with the handling of this car. Qualified fourth. He's running fourth. Let's go three abreast of the hill. Oh, no! James Blake Baldwin into the side of Steve Roberts. He's out wide, sideways for Aiden Hills. It's all kicked off immediately. And Steve Roberts, with his first ever pole position, has been shuffled way down the order. James Blake Baldwin will lead the way. Luke Herbert up the inside of Aiden Hills for second place. He goes through on his teammate, so uh, Hills down to third. And Jack Harding from 10th on the grid is into fourth place already. Christian White fifth, sixth place then for Simon Baldwin. And where is Steve Roberts? He's down towards the tail end of the top 10. Well, Steve will not be happy with that. There was definitely contact between the top two there, and James Blake Baldwin's come out of it in the lead. Roberts fighting straight back up the inside of Simon Baldwin there. Two wheels on the grass, but he can't go through. And Johnny Greensmith might take advantage of that as well gets to the inside towards the chicane at uh, Bobby's no can't make it stick so deep breath everyone what a dramatic start to the race that was it is James Blake Baldwin that leads the way Luke Herbert second Aidan Hills is putting him under all sorts of pressure in third place though Jack Harding remarkably is fourth ahead of Christian White fifth Simon Baldwin sixth and therefore it's seventh place for Steve Roberts so seventh place having led off the line he won't be pleased with that one across the line we go then lap number one in the books this race, uh, because of some delays earlier on in the day here at Castle Coombe, has been shortened by five minutes, so it's only a 15-minute affair now as well. So they're going to have to get on with it here as Aidan Hills goes to the outside line, up to the top of the hill, tries to go around the outside of both Luke Herbert and James Blake Baldwin. Blake Baldwin was always going to show him the edge of the road there, but it looks like Aidan might be able to get second place away. They head down towards the S's. Oops, one wide further back. I'm not quite sure who that was, Alex Miller, I think, and he's bouncing his way back on. But Aiden Hills leads. Aiden Hills went around the outside of two of the championship contenders to go from third to first in one corner. What a move that was. That means we've got our top three in the championship together again, and we never would have predicted that halfway around the second lap, Jack Harding would be on terms with Luke Herbert and James Blake Baldwin. On board with George Grant a bit further back in the Clapham North uh, liveried car. Championship sponsor, of course, is uh, George with the Clapham North Company. Turns his way through Tower Corner, enjoying some of the equally intense midfield battles that go on in this championship. Up and down the order, there's always something going on, and there's always someone to battle with, and George Grant knows that better than most. Back out of Bobby's, he goes down towards Camp Corner to the completion of the second lap of the race. And what a start to the race it has been. Here are the leaders then. Hills leads the way. Second place for James Blake Baldwin. Third, Luke Herbert. Fourth is Jack Harding. Although Christian White looks like he's trying to find a way back through into that fourth place. Yes, he is. And then it's Steve Roberts. So Steve Roberts has found a way past Simon Baldwin. He's gained one position. He's back into the top six. How much more progress can he make? Through the right hander they go then at the top of the hill. And Roberts took the inside of Christian White there. That move that Christian attempted on Jack Harding. Well, not only has it not worked, but it might have backfired because it's opened the door for Steve Roberts. And Steve will be fired up well and truly after that contact on the opening lap. And indeed, he does go through. So fifth place now for Steve Roberts, who's been the form man here all weekend long so far. He took pole position by two and a half tenths. Now, that doesn't sound like a huge amount, but... In Master MX-5 Super Cup terms, that's an absolute age. So uh, he really has got speed this weekend. And he's going for fourth now. Look up the inside of Jack Harding, who really 
can't afford a collision here. Jack is, remember, as we said, tied for the championship lead, but at the same time, he doesn't want to lose too much time to Luke Herbert. He's going to have to uh, play second best to Steve Roberts for the time being, though. Roberts goes through into fourth place, slides a bit wide through Bobbies, and look at the time that that's lost them to the top three. So really, those two need to work together now and uh, close in on the leading three. The pace that Roberts has got there, it might do Jack Harding some good just to follow him round, A, to find out where he's quick, and B, to try closing on the race leaders, and the race leader makes a mistake. Aidan Hills, all out of shape through the final corner. He loses the lead. He will lose second place as well. Blake Walden goes into P1, and Herbert follows him straight through. That was a real shame for Aidan Hills, who is still looking for his first win of the season. He's had a podium result at every one of the first four meetings this year, but he's yet to reach the top step of the podium, and he will have felt that that was one of his best opportunities to do so. Christian White dicing away with Jack Harding now for fifth place and we're on board with Christian as he dives up the inside in the Pure Racing 7 Motorsports car and he's going to be able to go through Jack Harding surely will uh, force the issue here which he does and holds on to a position that he really needs to keep he cannot afford to lose any more places and crucially any more points to his big championship rivals up the road down towards Tower Corner they go. Christian all over the rear bumper though of the uh, number 43 car in front hard on the brakes into Tower down through the S's comes the fourth place battle. No change in the order at the front of the field. Dare I say it, things have just started to calm down slightly now, but you just know it's all building to a real crescendo here at the end of the race. Aiden Hill's fourth, Harding fifth, Greensmith sixth, Christian White in seventh, then Simon Walden eighth, Alan Henderson in uh, ninth position. Didn't quite catch him rounding out the top ten, but uh, we'll have a look in a moment or two. Swanson wide, coming out of the tower, kicking up the dust. One of the leading three that was. Have we had any changes? No, but Steve Roberts is glued to the rear bumper of the race leader, James Blake Baldwin. Look at this for the race lead. Steve Roberts looking to the inside line towards Camp Corner. Now, that is not a place where you see overtaking happen very often. And I think Steve realised that that was an unnecessary risk to take at this stage. Instead, he concentrates on the exit speed, gets much more corner speed than uh, James Blake Baldwin did. Steve is really running rings around everyone in this race, but he just can't quite usurp James Blake Baldwin from the race lead. Up the hill they go again. James hugging the white line on the right-hand side of the road there, trying to defend his position over Avon Rise. So Roberts goes to the outside line. Now watch for the switchback. He'll try and get the late apex, get the nose of the number 56 car up the inside down towards the S's. He might have done it. Can James Blake Baldwin get over to defend or has Steve Roberts managed to prize the door open? I think the answer is that he's going to take the race lead. Steve Roberts up the inside line. Yes, he goes through. Steve Roberts back into the lead remarkably after what was a disastrous start to the race. And Blake Baldwin loses momentum. And this is even more significant because Luke Herbert is alongside. Now these two are fighting for the title and they are wheel to wheel down to Tower Corner, Aiden Hills wants to get back on the podium as well, they're almost three abreast as they come into the braking zone, inside line for Blake Baldwin, he will hang on but only just, and Luke Herbert, well, he did not, I didn't really expect this to be the situation that we have at this stage of the race, because look, they're all back together again now, their squabbling has brought Hills, Harding and Greensmith right back into play, and it's allowing Steve Roberts to check out, so forget about Roberts, he looks good for the race victory now, but what's going on behind, because that is significant for the championship, James Blake Baldwin is four points off the championship lead coming into this race and the championship lead is being shared by the man directly behind him and the white and blue number 43 car a few places behind last lap begins Steve Roberts leads the way but for second place it's anybody's guess James Blake Baldwin desperately hanging on to the position Luke Herbert is weaving this way and that Aidan Hills wants to join in the fun as well now we've got to sort this all out because we're going into quarry corner next and this is one of the most daunting corners in British motorsport Aidan Hills goes to the outside of Luke Herbert that could leave the door open for Harding to get up the inside no can't quite do it so the Positions stay the same for now. Roberts leading the way. Blake Baldwin second. Herbert in third. Hills fourth. Harding fifth. And then Johnny Greensmith sixth position. Hopping over the curbs. Oh, Aiden Hills all out of shape. Harding could do with getting past here. Aiden Hills fifth in the championship coming into this race, but uh, some way back from the leading three. He and Johnny Greensmith really debating fourth place in the points coming into this weekend. And he's ahead of Greensmith for the time being. But Aidan Hills is teammate to Luke Herbert, the man who Jack is sharing the championship lead with. If anything, actually, in the second half of this final lap, James Blake Baldwin's closed back in on Steve Roberts, but I don't think he's really got time to get there. Gets a decent exit from the Bobby Chicane, though, so it will be a bit of a drag race down to the last corner. But Steve Roberts is now just one turn away from his first ever victory in the Master MX-5 Super Cup. He turns into Camp Corner. He turns out of Camp Corner. He sees the chequered flag and he wins race number one of the day here at Castle Coombe. A phenomenal drive from Steve Roberts to fight his way back from about eighth position, I think he was, at the end of the opening lap or halfway around the opening lap uh, after that contact with Blake Baldwin. And he will feel that he deserved to get back up there and win the race.
Well, win it, he did. A victory for Steve Roberts for the first time in the championship by just over a quarter of a second from James Blake Baldwin, who will move into real championship contention now. Luke Herbert will take over the championship lead. He finishes in fourth with Aiden Hills, uh, sorry, third with Aiden Hills fourth and Jack Harding fifth. Outside the top ten, Sam Tatler, Tom Parker, Gary Townsend, Alec Livesley uh, and Bradley Kent round out the top 15 with all 22 starters making the flag. James, congratulations on your second place here at Castle Coombe. That was tough racing out there. A lot of battles going on, especially with Luke behind. I think uh, it's been rather tough this weekend, uh, you know, for the first race. Um, we've battled really, really hard in testing to get the car on pace. Um, and we, ha we had the pace to win. Um, but I made one or, or two mistakes and, and Steve um, got past me. Um, I just didn't have enough time to get back past him again. Um, but we've you know, made a few changes and hopefully the second race will, uh, will be a bit more successful. Luke, he started first, finished third, did get to second at one point. What happened? Um, we've struggled a little bit. We struggled at Rockingham. Um, we're struggling a little bit around here. So it's a, it's a high, high power track. Um, our engine's good. It's just not, not got the, the edge it used to have. Um, so yeah, managed to get to second. Um, you know, Steve dropped back a bit after, after the first lap. Uh, tried to stick with James and work with James, so I didn't lose too many points in the championship. But then Steve was just, you know, was just too quick for any of us, and he carved his way back through the traffic and uh, took the win, and we finished third. So yeah, I mean, all we need to do is keep getting podiums, and, and you know, that's how we won the championship last year. So we're trying to do the same this year. Race number two of the weekend for the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup is about to get underway. This is actually a rerun of race number two, which lasted a lap and a half in its first attempt before we had uh, a fairly sizable shunt to turn one, which brought out the red flags and meant that the race had to be delayed till the end of the day. So it's Steve Roberts and Christian White on row one, Luke Herbert and James Blake Baldwin championship contenders on the second row, ahead of Carl Garnett and Aidan Hills, with Jack Harding seventh this time, ahead of Simon Baldwin. Johnny Greensmith down on the fifth row again with Sam Tatler, then it's Gary Townsend and the returning Alan Henry. Henderson with Tom Parker, Alec Livesley, Alex Miller and Nick Rutter next in line. Then it's Jeff Gurrier, Bradley Kent, George Grant, Alex King, Mark Swarbrick and Duncan Harris at the back. So, as I said, the second attempt to run this race, this will be the final race of the weekend as well. The reverse grid third race will hopefully be run at a later event. But for now, this is it. The second and final race of the day here at Castle Coombe is underway. They launch towards turn number one with Steve Roberts looking to try and repeat his race victory from the first race of the day. On board with Mark Swarbrick as he dives to the outside of three or four cars on the run up the hill. And he's gained some ground immediately off the line in the number 23 car. Good to check in with Mark. We don't really got to see all that much of him so far this year. They crest over and rise though and James Blake Baldwin has the race lead. He's found a way past Steve Roberts. So Blake Baldwin ahead of Roberts uh, who slots into second place this time at least. So it's a slightly calmer run through the first quarter than we had the first time round. On board with Jack Harding. The black car to our left is Christian White. Oh and Jack into the back of Carl Carnett. It all got very very busy down in towards the S's that time around. But Christian White started second so he's really lost some ground off the line and he's lost even more now by getting shuffled out of line down towards the S's. Well Jack Harding who lost his share of the championship lead after his slightly difficult result in race number one. Luke Herbert, that man who just jinked out of line there in third position, is the man who now outright leads the championship, whilst Harding and Blake Baldwin are now, I believe, tied for second in the points. So it couldn't be any closer, really, though, between the two of them. Still only a couple of positions on the track. Either way, would swing it to any one of three drivers. We are into the second half of the season now, though, so it's all starting to take on extra significance. Gary Townsend there running a bit wide further back. On board with George Grant as we look back at uh, Jeff Gurrier in our mirrors. And uh, George... <laughs> someone's, oh, someone's off there. Who's that? That's a very strange place to have a car off. Someone went off there down in towards the... Um, the final quarter. I'm not entirely sure who that was. Hopefully they'll be able to rejoin. Leaders, they make their way up towards uh, Quarry Corner for the second time. The first time at full speed. Uh, Blake Baldwin defending the inside line. To the outside comes Steve Roberts though. We know how quick Steve's been this weekend. Can he get around the outside? No, he tries to get back in line. And there's a bit of contact actually with Luke Herbert. Carl Garnett there in fifth place. has got himself, oh, he's still ahead of Jack Hardy, I should say, who we're back on board with now. On the run down towards the S's. Harding peeking to the inside. But again, not really close enough to make that one work through the 
right hand and out west way they go and it's all quite congested at the front but James Blake Baldwin who was kicking himself after losing the race victory in yesterday's first race well Steve Roberts the man who beat him to that victory is the man filling his mirrors at the moment who goes up the inside line down towards tower thought he was going to go for the lead but I don't think he was really close enough no Blake Baldwin comes out to the other side of the corner still in the position so Blake Baldwin leads Roberts second Herbert third it's Hills in fourth Garnet fifth then Harding sixth seventh is Christian White eighth is Johnny Greensmith and ninth and nice to see him back in the lead bunch is Alan Henderson, car 185. Drop ball with Luke Herbert, a unique view here from the roll cage of the reigning champions car. As he heads down towards Camp Corner, you really see the speeds involved there here at Castle Coombe, the lack of runoff area as well. If you go off the road, then you're straight in the barriers and almost certainly out of the race. Steve Roberts, though, looking to drag around the outside of James Blake Baldwin. He wants this lead back. He wants a double race victory here from Castle Coombe. Can he do it? Looking to the outside line. That could open the door for Luke Herbert on the inside, though. Keep an eye on the second of those blue cars up the inside. Car number one to try and take advantage of this side-by-side -side action in front of him. Blake Baldwin and Roberts almost leaning on each other. And Luke Herbert could make it three wide. Looks to the inside of the pair of them on the run down towards the S's. We're back on board with Christian White a bit further back. Jack Harding there launches up the inside of Carl Garnett and will take the position away from what happened at the front of the field. Who has got the race lead? Just being kicked up. They're all still there. They're still side by side though, but Roberts has got it. So Roberts has got the race lead side by side for second now between Blake Baldwin and Luke Herbert and Aidan Hill saying, uh, don't forget about me. I want to get back on that podium. They can't all get through tower. Surely they're going to have to be a big sort out here and it will sort out with Roberts leading the way. Blake Baldwin into second and Aidan Hills could get up the inside of uh, Luke Herbert for third. Indeed he does. So Aidan Hills gets back into the podium positions and well, we once again are in the situation where we've got Luke Herbert and Jack Hard absolutely together once more the top two in the championship going into this weekend are nose to tail on the track again fighting over fourth place there they're both a bit further down than they would have anticipated I'm sure through camp corner again out onto the curb on the exit of the corner but Rob Boston Racing's Steve Roberts is back out in front there's a bit of damage to the rear bumper it's just hanging a bit loose in the wind he's had contact from somebody remember he had contact from James Blake Baldwin up at this corner on the first lap of race number one Hopefully they'll keep it clean this time around. Aidan Hills to the outside, trying to get second place away from Blake Baldwin. He does like this outside manoeuvre at Quarry, but you can only do it so many times before that happens and you get shoveled out onto the grass. And Aidan Hills, unfortunately, possibly should have known better there. And he ends up dropping down into fourth position. Yes, fourth position. So he splits the championship contenders once more now. So Blake Baldwin who, if he finishes where he is now, might just be able to move back into the championship lead. If he can get a car between himself and Luke Herbert, he will move through into the championship lead. And that car that he could get between them is Steve Roberts. Down towards Tower, there's a gap on the inside. Blake Baldwin goes for it, Roberts turns in. Oh, there's contact between the two of them. Steve Roberts is off. Steve Roberts into the tire wall, bang. And that will surely be the end of his race. And that was a very unfortunate incident indeed. Contact for the second time this weekend between James Blake Baldwin and Steve Roberts has put Steve Roberts out of the lead and out of the race. Well, there will almost certainly be a discussion about that after the race is finished, but the race has not finished yet. It's still going on. And Luke Herbert now finds himself in second position, chasing down James Blake Baldwin, the race leader. He's in the slipstream up the hill. Here is a replay. Well, there was a gap. There was no doubt about it. There was a gap up the inside, but you can see that James was so late on the brakes. He lost the rear of the car turning in. He slides wide even after making contact with Roberts, and Roberts ends up in the barriers. Well, it's not my position to make a judgment call on that, but I'm sure the clerk of the course will have a discussion with the pair of them after the race. Back with Luke then as he heads into camp. The car doesn't look overly difficult to drive it's just a little bit more difficult than it usually would be and Luke Herbert we've commented in the past is so silky smooth in his driving style but he's really having to soar at the wheel a little bit here in this one to keep the car moving forwards and he's still having to fend off people from behind Carl Garnett now the latest man to latch onto his rear bumper Luke would ordinarily feel pretty good about his chances of keeping Carl Garner to pay, but Carl has had a real standout weekend here at Castle Coombe. Further back, uh, Alan Henderson's found a way past Christian White, so that's another place gained for the former champion. Although Christian was looking back to the inside, then into the S's. No, nope, can't find a way through. To the right, through the left, back through Westway then, and in towards Hammerdown. Further back, Sam Tatler there, Dyson Bay with, I think that was... Um, Possibly Gary Townsend. Yes, I think it was Gary Townsend. The other yellow and purple car. Here's Alan Henderson's yellow and purple car, though, as it works its way down through Tower Corner. Car 185. It really would be great to have Alan back on board full time in the championship. Right then, 
leaders coming through onto what may become the final lap of this race. We'll have to wait and see what the clock is on as they cross the timing beam. Of course, it's easy to forget now that both James Blake Baldwin and this man Jack Harding have quite some distance ahead of the rest of the field as they turn through camp back across the start finish line. Last lap board has gone out, so one more lap around the Castle Cube circuit to go. Looks like our top three positions are fairly set now. Looks like it's going to be Blake Baldwin from Harding from Aidan Hills. But what about fourth place? Because Luke Herbert is still having to defend heavily from Carl Garnett. Towards quarry comes Christian White as he tries to find a way back ahead of Alan Henderson. In turn, is boxed in behind Johnny Greensmith, who's just not had the middle part of the season that he'd have hoped for after a really solid start to the year for Johnny, including that win, of course, at Knock Hill. Uh, it's just not quite gone to plan through the summer months so far for the former Porsche ace. Harding then in second. And look at Aidan Hills. He's actually caught Jack Harding on this lap. So second place isn't quite as secured as I thought it was, maybe. Harding under pressure. Runs wide. Very wide indeed, in fact. And so Aidan Hills will be right with him now as they go down into the last sequence of corners. James Blake Baldwin is looking good, though, for another race victory. Uh, what would be his uh, fourth win of the season. However, that is very much provisional because there will be a discussion post-race, I'm sure, about that contact with Steve Roberts. For second place, it looks like it will be Jack Harding, but James Blake Baldwin takes the race victory. Second place just to Jack Harding, who almost celebrated a bit too early there, and Aidan Hills in third. Well, post-race, as we suspected might be the case, a penalty dished out to James Blake Baldwin. He is disqualified from the result, thus ending his championship challenge. Harding, therefore, inherits the win from Aidan Hills and Luke Herbert, second and third. And that will mean the championship is tied once again between Jack Harding and Luke Herbert. There you see confirmation of Blake Baldwin's non-finished uh, or disqualification, and that cannot be counted as a drop score. Well, here's how the championship looks then. Luke Herbert and Jack Harding tied on points again with Aidan Hills third and Johnny Greensmith fourth. Steve Roberts fifth, Blake Baldwin down to sixth with that disqualification, putting him out of championship contention realistically. Then Simon Baldwin, Carl Garnett, Sam Tatler and Jack Sycamore rounds out the top ten. Jack, it's been a, a tough weekend for you. Yeah, it's been tough. We qualified tenth, um, so it was just damage limitation this weekend. We uh, went from tenth to fifth in the first race, which was okay, but we were just not, we didn't have the pace. So we started seventh in this race, we made a few adjustments and uh, yeah, we seem to do all right. So I'd have been happy with the podium. The yeah, so second's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it, it's all looking well, isn't it? Particularly going forward, Autumn Park, we've seen you quick there in previous years. Think you can do well there? Yeah, I'd like to think that the last three tracks, um, like they're all close to me, so they're kind of my home tracks and uh, you know, I enjoy going around them, so hopefully we'll go well there. But uh, yeah, massive thanks to AK Motorsport this weekend. They've done an absolutely brilliant job with the car and, you know, family, friends, girlfriend, everything, uh, and Yorkshire Trade Windows for getting me here today. Well, congratulations, Jack. Look forward to seeing you at Autumn. Thank you very much. Cheers. Aidan, you came out fighting there. Was it down to luck or was that quite tactical No other drivers were going to be suffering with this heat? Um, I wouldn't say there was tactics or luck, to be honest. <laughs> Obviously, we, we, we were in qualifying uh, with 2-6 with and it just made the weekend a lot harder than it should have been. Um, I had the pace to win both races, really. Um, in that one, you know, I briefly got into the lead and just made a little mistake and James got back and then we were back to 6th and just picking people off lap by lap and ended up, ended up back in third with fastest lap. So I can't complain, it's another podium. We've had five out of five meetings, so yeah, it's a good weekend, really.